Hey everyone, I'm Johnny, and today we're taking a look at the SD KFZ 251 half track, which is probably the most famous half track ever created. On film, its iron crosses and sharp angles really make it stand out. These vehicles show up frequently in cinema as either post war Czech productions or restored World War II variants. Over 15,000 would be produced in 23 variants by seven manufacturers during the war. This was a highly interesting vehicle for Germany. So let's take a closer look at it and some of the movies it's featured in. SD KFZ is short for Zundekraftfahrzeug, which means special purpose vehicle, a designation given to over 100 German military vehicles. Most commonly the 251 is referred to as an SPW or Schutzenpanzerwagen, meaning armored infantry vehicle, as their principal purpose was to transport panzer grenadiers or mechanized infantry into battle. <laughs> Lastly, I should highlight the common nickname, which is Hanomag, referring to the company that designed the 251 in the late 1930s. This is largely a rejected and not accurate nickname, according to most Germans, and it's also way too easy for non-Germans to pronounce compared to other lengthy compound titles. Ah. The large majority of 251 variants you will find on film are the Tetra OT-810, a post-war Czechoslovak version. About 1,500 of these were built between 1958 and 1962. These have an armored roof over the troop compartment and were generally not well liked by those who used them post-war, earning the nickname Hitler's Revenge. Well, um, down with Hitler. All the way down, sir. Yeah. <laughs> the 251 was initially designed to be a squad transport vehicle, to transport 10 Pranzer Grenadiers while protecting them from small arms fire, with some limited protection against indirect artillery fire. The 251 was also designed to protect itself and provide suppressing fire from one or two MG-34s or MG-42 machine guns. The armor was considered adequate against rifle rounds, particularly as it had the advantage of angled plates. The majority of 251 half-tracks had open tops, which were of course easier to manufacture and provided infantry the ability to fight from the vehicle or escape from the open top if needed. Naturally, the downside was exposure to indirect and plunging fire. Generally, troops are safer to dismount and fight from terrain rather than fight from the tall and large, lightly armored target. A lack of an armored roof was also particularly hazardous in city environments. Most 251s had a maximum speed of 52.5 kilometers an hour, with an operational range of 300 kilometers. With a respectable crew and towing capacity, the 251 was competent at what it was designed for, providing mobile infantry support to tanks. Production success varied for the 251. Some variants, such as the Model C, were overly complicated to manufacture, in part due to the number of angled body plates. Further complicating 251 production was the German habit of sticking every gun imaginable on every chassis available. There were anti-aircraft, howitzer, and anti-tank gun variants. There were even units fitted with flamethrowers, a short-range weapon where the half-track would need significant protection. Longer. Other rare variants included those with rockets and another with an infrared searchlight to work in conjunction with Panther tanks with infrared detectors. Many of these variants were a distraction at what the half track was actually good at, moving highly effective Panzer Grenadiers. The 
The continued upgrading and mixed use of the 251 created many issues in some ways similar to the modern day American Humvee, a good utility transport vehicle, which was pressed into combat roles it wasn't ideally designed for. In the mud and snow of the Eastern Front, the track design was of great advantage. The 251 had a large track area for its weight of 7.8 tons and could aid in the towing of other vehicles. However, tracks of course added to the complexity of the 251's design over a standard truck. The 251's also shared the over-engineered track systems common in German tanks. Germany consistently had resource issues on the Eastern Front and breakdowns of track systems could be highly costly with some vehicles needing to be abandoned if they are unable to be repaired. Reich Marshal Goering assures me that everything is completely under control. The 251 was a fairly rare vehicle, despite frequently showing up both in the movies and documentary footage. Compared to the American M3 half-track, the 251 was significantly more complicated to produce. Interestingly, American half-tracks fill in for a significant number of German half-tracks throughout older World War II movies. That being said, there were instances of Germans capturing and repurposing American half-tracks during the war. From 1943 onwards, the production was simplified in the Model D version, having less angled body plates. Yes, the Germans did occasionally simplify designs. This version is easy to identify because the rear armor has one slope instead of a triangular slope at the back as shown here. You got a problem for party, set her up. Due to less than ideal production and distribution, the 251 was mostly used to fill transportation and infantry support gaps that existed on the Eastern Front. Ideally for Germany, hundreds more would have been available to properly aid in combined arms tactics. The biggest downfall for the 251 was that it was significantly more expensive than a truck, and Germany desperately needed trucks throughout the war. And as the 251 was operated piecemeal in so many different roles, including roles it wasn't designed for, it was never allowed to make a big enough impact to justify its cost. Simply producing more trucks and tanks may have been more efficient. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the 251. As always, I'm just an amateur movie fan, so if you want to add to or correct anything, please feel free to do so in the comments section below, and we'll see you in the next video.